In 2017, India launched a communication satellite for South Asia from the Sri Harikota Space Center. The satellite, funded entirely by India, aimed at helping regional countries like Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Bangladesh, Nepal and Bhutan to boost their telecommunication and broadcasting services. But Pakistan opted out of the initiative. Experts termed the launch as Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's space diplomacy. Do you know that India is the only country in the South Asian region with orbital launch capabilities while also maintaining and operating one of the world's largest artificial fleets of satellites. 2023 is a big year for India in terms of space. Let's now take a look at the latest news from the Indian Space Agency. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Geosynchronous Satellite Launch Vehicle F-12 or GSLV F-12 lifts off from India's most prolific spaceport Sri Harikota in Andhra Pradesh. The fourth launch for the Indian Space Research Organization. Another feather in a much decorated cap. We are coming to you at a time when the liftoff of GSLV, India's tallest rocket, this is the 420 ton rocket, almost 51 meters tall. This vehicle is uh, lifting off as we speak from the second launch pad of Satish Dhawan Space Center. So this is a vehicle that's carrying NVS-01, a second generation navigation satellite of India. So NVS-01 weighs 2,232 kilograms. This is a satellite uh, that is actually meant to help India for navigation related purposes, navigation, timing and positioning. NBS-01, as we speak, is being taken to what is known as a geosynchronous transfer orbit. Weighing about 2,232 kilograms, NBS-01 is the first of the second generation satellites intended for the navigation with Indian Constellation Services. The navigation satellite has been put into the geosynchronous transfer orbit. A geosynchronous transfer orbit is a special position high above the Earth that allows an object to keep pace with the rotation of the Earth. Drifting to the north and south, a satellite in a geosynchronous orbit would, for the most part, appear to be in a fixed position in the sky. For the first time ever, the NVS-01 will carry an atomic clock on board. Tell us about NVS-01 and how it gives a significant boost to India's navigation and indigenous capabilities in position and timing. Say for a nation like us, such a huge nation, such a large number of people using uh, more digitally oriented com you know, community, it is important to provide PNT services, positioning, navigation, timing services. And there is a business community which requires timing services and positioning services, fleet management, business, com business uh, activities of even food delivery and uh, so, much, so on and so forth. So we need to have an independent system and it's equally important to have a strategic importance in this because uh, all our borders are protected by equipments and machinery and people where they also require to have the PNT services which is secured that nobody in the world can stop us from doing what we want to do. So that means that we need to have a stronger navigation, regional navigation, possibly global at a later point in time, but today it is required to be regional so that it is working. And we have a technique by which it can be made global when we want it. It's exciting times for the Indian space sector. The Indian government has been pushing to develop a private space industry to complement its state-run space program known for its affordable launches and missions. Three, two, one, zero. Last year in November, India successfully launched its first privately developed rocket, Vikram S into the upper reaches of the atmosphere, marking another milestone in a push to become a leading aeronautic power. ISRO will launch the Chandrayaan-3 mission to the moon later this year. According to reports, the satellite has arrived at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota. The ambitious lunar mission will soon be integrated with India's most powerful rocket, the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle Mark III or the GSLV Mark III. After the success of Chandrayaan-1, India launched second lunar exploration mission Chandrayaan-2 in 2019. 
but there have been setbacks. On the 6th of September 2019, the Chandrayaan-2 lander had crashed when it deviated from its intended trajectory while attempting to land on the surface of the moon. An array of emotions on display. Chandrayaan-3 will carry scientific instruments to study thermophysical properties of the lunar regolith. Lunar seismicity, lunar surface plasma environment, elemental composition near the landing site. Announcement of the Chandrayaan-3 July launch comes at a time when China sent three astronauts to its Tiangong space station, putting a Chinese civilian into orbit for the first time. Beijing is also planning to send a crewed mission to the moon by the end of the decade. This year, ISRO is also set to test Gaganyaan crew module mission. The first crewed flight of Gaganyaan will carry three Indian astronauts on a short orbital test flight and the mission planned for the end of 2024. It's been more than 50 years since ISRO was founded, from the time when parts of rockets were carried on a bicycle or a bullock cart for initial space experiments to the first Indian astronaut in space. India has taken several strides in the space race. Chandrayaan-3 and Gaganyaan hold out new momentum and victories. <laughs>